I kinda knew this was gonna happen. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. First and foremost, I would like to thank all of those that joined me during my first live feed uh, on Thursday the 2nd. Uh, I do appreciate you being here, and I also got a few phone calls, which was very surprising. Usually beginners don't get that much attention. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Uh, although most of my audience was on uh, Odyssey, which actually is not a bad thing. I'm actually trying to get off of YouTube. I'm sure that I'm being censored somehow because I've only had 300 subs for the last four or five months now. So, and my family claims to not be able to find my channel. So, <laughs> they're doing it to me and I'm not even that big. So, it's time to move. Huge shout out to Devin Mackinac for my very first donation to my PayPal account during my live shows. Thank you very much. I'm going to try and find a way to frame that. You know, just like most brick and mortar businesses would frame their first dollar or their first hundred dollars for starting. It's a celebration. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. And we'll go right back into helping you get your voice out there. Great big shout out to the callers last night, Red Dawn Radio. Make sure you go follow him on Odyssey, Red Dawn Radio. It was an honor to have you call me last night. Uh, Salty Cracker talks very highly of you, and any friend of Salty Cracker is a friend of mine. Uh, also, thank you for uh, reaching out to me, 451 Actual. He was on Discord. Um, go check him out. I think he's just beginning and doing this also, too. And Hidden Angel, it was a pleasure to talk to you last night. I hope to hear from you again. Uh, maybe I'll hear you on ABL if I get a chance to watch him again. Actually going live keeps one quite busy. So I still try to listen to these people. Maybe you can keep me up to date while we talk. And last but not least, I want to give a great big shout out to Wage War. He's the one that helped me get this all together and started in the first place. He also hung with me for the whole show to make sure that um, you could hear me out there in Cyberland. So thank you very much, Wage War. Make sure to go check him out also on Odyssey. That's W-A-G-E underscore W-A-R-R. Thanks again for all the callers and all the support. I really appreciate it and it gives me the impetus to move forward. Let's do this. The world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. We had a really good time. I had a good time showing you all some of the stupid stuff and also uh, showing you all some of my heroes throughout my, that come throughout my feeds. Um, I continue to, I'm going to continue to cover cool stuff, hopefully, but my main purpose is to get your voice out there. So make sure you stay tuned in. Make sure you subscribe, like, uh, make a comment every once in a while. That actually helps me get uh, suggested to others on all the platforms, actually. And, um, of course, a donation would be the ultimate. If you were with me, I'm very sorry. I had to delete the YouTube version of the feed because everything was so slow. But now you know what kind of equipment and what kind of uh, internet that I'm actually dealing with and can afford at the moment. <laughs> So I apologize for that. I actually do have the the uh, show uploaded on Odyssey, and I will upload it on my other channels as well. I did get a very good copy of it. Actually, I recorded it here at home, which probably helped to slow down. So I'm still learning with all of this stuff. I appreciate you bearing with me. The main goal is the freedom of speech, and I'll get it down. I'll get it down or I'll die trying. So anyway, thank you very, very much for being here and uh, supporting me. I, uh, I'm overwhelmed already. Thank you so much. Please keep it up and remember that I will be live on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. So that means 8 p.m. Eastern, 
7 or 6 p.m. mountain time and of course 5 o'clock avocado time. I'll try not to keep you all up too late and depending on what happens the times and uh, uh, everything like that might change. Like I say, I, this is the very you you witnessed the very first show of someone who almost knows what they're doing. The world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. While we were on the show, we were discussing uh, this Alec Baldwin case. Now, once again, I can't believe that nobody is screaming white privilege to this man. I, uh, what's the deal here? Except for the fact that he killed another white person. But now, he's claiming that he didn't even pull the trigger. So I got a couple of questions here, first of all, and I'm gonna show you something that makes him ultimately responsible no matter what he says, no matter what anybody else says, and it's not even an or it's not even coming from an organization that he doesn't happen to like, which is the NRA. Which, if he'd have taken at least one of their classes, he would have known better. So, this man is now claiming, I did not pull the trigger. Did someone come up behind you and pull it for you? Were you entered by a ghost? Or, a, what do they call it, a poltergeist? Did that poltergeist do it for you? It is almost virtually impossible for a gun to go off by itself. However, if he convinces people of this, it's going to convince people that more and more people need to have their guns taken away because they will no longer blame the person behind the gun as in this case and every case should be. They will now start blaming the guns for everything that happens bad with a gun and that will be their excuse to law them away from us, if you will. Um, uh, let's see, Al Alec Baldwin gave his first interview since the fatal shooting of cinematographer H Helena Hutchins on the set of his movie, his movie, Rust, and he says he didn't pull the trigger. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled, the 63-year-old actor shared during a snippet of his interview with ABC News' George Stephanopoulos. That should tell you everything you need to know right there. They're getting ready to try and make this guy the victim. In the meantime, he's going to be the main advocate for taking away our guns, or one of them. I guarantee you. What else could this be? Oh, I didn't pull the trigger. It was the gun's fault. Even though it was in my hand and I had it pointing at two people or pointing at a person and it ended up killing one and injuring another. I have another question. Did this bullet just come from out of nowhere? Was there a sniper behind his shoulder or something? He didn't pull the trigger. That's absolutely impossible. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. Only people who know absolutely zero, 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 zero about guns and gun safety, which they teach you in the military, I would venture to say that most military people right now are seething. But uh, <laughs> there's zero chance of that happening. Zero. And you have zero idea about any gun if you believe that it did. I didn't pull the trigger, he said. I would never point a gun at anyone and pull the trigger at them. Never. Except for that one time. He's either... Well, again, he's going along with the narrative. It's going to keep him out of jail. It's going to keep him out of trouble. Uh, etc. and etc. I still can't believe that the, can the gun cancel culture is not all over him about this. Because even they know gun safety is about. They should, if they don't. The trigger wasn't pulled. Well, I'm going to inform you one more time because people are saying, oh, and like I say, they're trying to make him the victim. He even shed a couple of tears. What a, what a great actor, huh? What a great actor. He's almost as good as Jesse Smollett. <laughs> almost. So anyway, I found another establishment that um, stands for gun safety. It's the National, uh, let's see, NSSF, the, Fire, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. And I believe, believe NSSF stands for, 
Let's see, what did they tell? What did they tell me here? National Shooting Sports Foundation Incorporated. And they actually give out a guide with uh, purchases of guns, I believe, I've heard tell. In fact, I saw my neighbor when I went and visit them. They showed me their new firearm and they showed and I saw the envelope of stuff that came with it. And I said, do you mind if I look at this? And I looked up the internet and this is what I found. This is their pamphlet that they give out. Firearm safety depends on you. Now, this isn't even the NRA. Okay, this is another completely different firearm safety establishment okay from the time you pick up a firearm you become a part of a system over which you have complete control you are the only part of the system that can make a gun safe or unsafe make no mistake about it drugs alcohol and guns do not mix um, Hollywood that's all I'm gonna say there the first, this is on the first page before you even open the book. Basics of safe gun handling. I'm going to give you all of the reasons. Ten reasons. These are ten reasons why this man is ultimately responsible. Aside from the fact that he owned everything and he was in charge. One, always, always keep the muzzle, that's the front of the gun where the bullet comes out, Pointed in a safe direction, usually down on the floor or on the ground, especially if you're out. Away from people or anything that you wouldn't want to lose or destroy. Number two, firearms should be unloaded when not actually in use. If it was a prop gun, then that means it wouldn't have had bullets in it to begin with, but you still don't want to take a chance. This was a real gun that they were using, and of course prop means property, but it wasn't actually a prop as far as they define it. But it wasn't unloaded either, and he didn't check it, nor did his armor. But again, armor aside, once you get that gun in your hands, you're responsible for it. You're the only one. It's like using your voice. At that point, you're the only one that can do anything with it. Number three, do not rely on your gun's safety. The safest thing you can do until you are ready to shoot is absolutely do not put your finger in the trigger hole. Four, be sure of your target and what's beyond it? Don't just shoot willy-nilly. And if you shoot into the sky, you can't be aware of anything. Don't be doing that stuff. Five, use the correct ammunition. Six, if your gun fails to fire when the trigger is pulled, handle with care. Keep doing uh, one, especially one. Seven, always wear eye and ear protection when shooting. I've learned that firsthand. Eight, be sure the barrel is clear of obstructions before shooting. That is once again, when you take it, you look inside of it and make sure that it's not loaded. That is checking your firearm. That's basically what they teach you before you even start pulling the trigger, even to practice. Nine, do not alter or modify your gun and have guns serviced regularly. Ten, learn the mechanical and handling characteristics of the firearm you are using. Those are ten basics that before you even pull a trigger or start to practice, you should know and you should practice. Those ten things right there are what ultimately makes this man responsible. Accident or not. Not to mention the fact that there were lives affected, other lives affected. You killed someone's mother. They say also, if you for any reason feel uncomfortable with, which I can't imagine, or are unable to accept these responsibilities, we strongly urge you not 
to own a firearm. That just makes sense to me. And it's another one of our freedoms. Look, you don't like a gun, you feel uncomfortable with a gun, you don't think you can handle a gun, don't get one! Nobody's forcing you to! But, you don't have the right to take away anybody else's either. And believe me, if you do, you are being extremely short-sighted because those will be the people that if the cops aren't available, would probably protect your life as well no matter how much you hate the gun. So, my basic point is please don't allow this jerk or anyone else to tell you that it's the gun's fault. The gun is a tool. In fact, you can even do your own experiment. Load your gun, set it somewhere safe where nobody else will touch it or whatever. I mean, only do this if you don't have kids or whatever like that. But set it somewhere and see how long it takes for it to go off by itself. I guarantee you, you'll go to your grave waiting. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, we're going live on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central, 5 o'clock avocado time. Please make sure you give us a like, a share, a subscribe. Follow me on all of my other platforms. You never know what's going to happen. And a donation would be the ultimate. Help me go and actually upgrade some of this stuff so my live feeds will be a little bit faster. <laughs> I do appreciate everybody that came to the first show. Please, please come back and see us again. Let your voice be heard. That's the whole point of my show. The world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!